Hi, Matt from Swiftix Software here. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more updates like this one. Now, today I want to talk about um, stress tests and the simplest of stress tests and how to write it in Java, which might be a little bit unusual, but it can be done. Now, my specific use case was this. I changed um, the fan setup on my on my PC such that when the temperature goes up, I want the fans to go faster to basically keep the temperature below a, you know, what I call an acceptable threshold. That's what I was trying to do. And I thought, you know, there's lots of stress test programs out there on the internet um, that I can use. You can just download and use them. But the trouble with those is they are proper stress tests. They stress test all of your threads. They stress test test the CPUs in such a way to such an extreme that they can become dangerous and they could potentially damage your CPU. If you find, for example, if the fan, the heat sink fell off during such a stress test, you wouldn't be able to stop it, really, to be honest, because the system is under such stress that you can't really interrupt it easily. It's not responsive anymore. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to get something in Java that keeps all the cores in my system busy enough at 100% so that the temperature goes up and I can see how the fans are going faster and slower. I just wanted to see that happening. And I just wanted to make sure that the temperature stays below an acceptable threshold for me. So when you do this in Java, the funny thing is that the just-in-time compiler is really, really efficient. So if you try to create an, a loop that doesn't do very much, the just-in-time compiler will optimize it away. And what happens is you run it and nothing really happens. It doesn't really put any stress on your system. So here's my tip to you. The simplest way to generate a loop that the just-in-time compiler can't optimize away is to use big integers. It's really, really simple to do. So what I've done here is I've created a little run function here. And what I do is I just create two big integers one called i and one called j and they both initialize them both as zero and then what i do is i run this loop until you know <laughs> i becomes that really really big number so this is how many times i run this loop and all i do in here is i add one to i and then i add i to j so i becomes really big and then j becomes even bigger really really big actually to be honest um, so the thing with big integers is that behind the scenes, the representation isn't in a number. It's not in a process or register or something. The representation is usually done, I haven't looked at the implementation, but it's usually done in something like a string. And then when you add two big integers together, it's actually doing like what we used to learn at school. You know, this, you write one number under the other and then you add the digits and then, you know, it goes above 10, you carry one over, etc. That's what it really does behind the scenes, it, you know, when you use something like uh, like a big integer library. Now, what that means is it's really processor intensive. So when you get to these massive numbers that we get to here, because J becomes very, very, very big. When we get to these massive numbers, it has to do an awful lot of work. So this loop, really keeps the processor very, very busy. So this is enough for one thread. But what I actually do is I check how many logical processors there are. And as you will have spotted here on um, Open Hardware Monitor here, as you will have spotted, I've got eight cores in this system, but each of those cores has two threads. So it's actually 16 logical processors as far as Java is concerned. So what I do is I create an individual Java thread for each of those logical processes. So basically, in this case, I end up with 16 of them. Now, the good thing here is, and I'm going to run this now, the good thing here is, as you can see, it runs pretty much at 100% CPU usage. The temperature does go up, but you also find that the system is still responsive. So I can still go in IntelliJ, I can still do things. So it's not completely, completely killing my system. And most importantly, I can hit the stop button and actually interrupt it. And now it's just stopped. It's like, oh, I get worried about this, the, the temperature. Just stop it. There's no problem at all. But it is enough 
to sort of prove, and I've just started it again, it's enough to prove that, you know, when the temperature goes up, and it just went there to 61, 62 degrees, I just spotted or something, something like that. And then the fans speed up because they're all temperature controlled. So, you know, as the temperature goes up, my fans go go up. I've got like a, this this curve that's that says at a certain temperature, it goes to a certain speed. And as you can see, it then goes very quickly down again to around 50-ish degrees. And I'm really happy with that. And this is all I was trying to do. So this is what it is. The simplest possible test, a stress test written in Java. And to be honest, this took me minutes. Literally just a few minutes to write this code. It is so simple. If you want to, if you want this code, leave a comment um, in, you know, leave a comment on the video. Um, I'm happy to open source it. You know, there isn't an awful lot to it, but, you know, happy to open source it if anyone wants it. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates like this one. Thank you.